I bought a $49 gaming PC secondhand from Facebook Marketplace. People let their PCs become dirty junk and waste, but I always believe there is a second chance for all PCs. So I'm gonna bring this little gem back to life and create a budget low-end gaming PC, which I'll eventually flip for a profit. This is a GTX 750 system. The cooler has broken off of the socket. I'm surprised that the CPU hasn't overheated or anything like that. All of the RAM are completely different to each other. The cables just look like a rat's nest. And speaking of nests, there are so many spiderwebs in this build. I wouldn't be surprised to find a few creepy crawlies when we're cleaning it out. The inside of the case is sticky to the touch. And I believe that whoever owned this was probably smokers. It looks like this PC has either been in a garage work environment or it's been sitting there for a while just collecting so much dust because it is absolutely caked. Really not pleasant to smell or look at. So I think there's only one thing left to do. Let's bring this PC back to life. PDF files are used every single day in our lives from contracts, invoices, and much more. Today's sponsor, UPDF, is a powerful PDF tool compatible with Windows, Android, Mac OS, and iOS. And it is much cheaper than Adobe Acrobat, especially when there's a free version for you to try out. You can completely edit and add text, add in images, or even edit images to move them around the page. You can even edit links while preserving their original formats perfectly. You can also annotate with with many interesting tools, most of which Adobe Acrobat does not have access to. You can convert your PDF to Word, Excel, or even a PowerPoint by using the export feature. If you have someone you'd like to share the PDF with, but not allow them to copy, download, or print the file, you could actually enable that function. There's some lazy bugger out there who has no shame handing in the exact same assignment as you. The AI can also help explain, write, and help you translate. So if you want something in Spanish, you could just ask for the translation. If I want a paragraph written in a more professional manner, it can assist with that. Honestly, try it for free, guys. And if you do like it, upgrade to the pro version. That'll unlock all of the program's full capabilities. We currently do have a 62% discount. So if you're interested, visit the links in the video description. Okay, guys, I want to show you the things I just discovered with this build. So the motherboard tray over here, it never had any standoffs on there. The motherboard was screwed directly into the tray. Number two, right down here, I have found like four cockroaches, little tiny ones. I think they were making a nest inside the power supply. That is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> I really don't want to touch the power supply now and I'm afraid of what I'm going to find on the inside if I open it up. I can imagine why they were in there because it's nice and warm for them, but that's just gross. This case, while being extremely dirty, especially compared to some of the previous PCs we've cleaned up, I think this is going to be one of the more satisfying cleanups on the channel. This PC has obviously been sitting here for years. There's so many spider webs in there. We found a couple of dead spider bodies, but the amount of dust in here is just incredible. Now the PC stinks. It is green. Greasy. I wouldn't be surprised if a smoker owned this, but the case itself, once you take away the dust, actually looks fairly good. Now, all of the screws on the case, they have a bit of wear and tear, a bit of rust, so we're gonna completely remove them. We're gonna repaint the screws, but first things first, I think we need to blow out the case, get rid of all of that stuff in there, and then we need to hose it out.
Well, we managed to take this cockroach infested case and to be honest, it's actually cleaned up really well considering its age. You know, apart from a few spots on the case, it almost looks brand new. We got all of the dust and grime out. All the cockroaches are definitely gone. It's no longer smelling either. It's not sticky anymore. And so I'm super happy with how it's turned out. Now, the only minor details which are affecting this case is, I guess from the buildup of dust and grime over time, it's kind of pitted into the metal so it's not really removable so at the front here uh, down the side and up the top it's definitely pitted into the metal there are some scuff marks that cannot be removed and we've also got the same happening down the bottom here where the power supply was it's kind of permanently baked in so the only way to remove it would be to sand this back and give the case maybe a new paint job however for what this is i don't think it's really worth it <laughs> And of course, like because this case is so old, there's obviously going to be general wear and tear. Some of the powder coating has flaked off up here. I don't know whether the previous user was trying to install fans or something there. So that's probably come off from using the fan screws on the inside. And then of course, you've got the wear of the paint that's on the actual case panel screws. I mean, that's pretty common for a case that's this old. So I may even try and give the screws a paint job. This power supply right here, one of the dirtiest that we have had in quite a while especially on the inside and on the fan grill. In fact, at the rear here, it is caked with dust and it has started rusting. Oh, and it looks like there's a little cockroach on the back of the power supply unit. That's uh, pretty gross. So I don't know if I necessarily trust this power supply. And if I do have a spare power supply that I can put in, I will do so. However, I am curious to know if this still works. So I will be testing it. Please no cockroaches on the inside. Oh, yuck. Oh, that is disgusting. There are so many cockroaches inside this power supply. Oh, that is disgusting. Guys, I really don't like to open up power supplies. They're extremely dangerous. I do have some gloves on now, so I'm hoping that that adds a little bit of protection. And at the moment, I just wanna go through with the toothbrush and try and loosen up as much of the dust as possible, give it one more blowout, and then I'm gonna get some isopropyl alcohol in there to try and clean it right up. Because I wanna see if this power supply still actually works or not. Honestly, most likely for the system, I'm not gonna use this power supply. It is old, I don't trust it. It's got so many dead cockroaches in here. So I think a new power supply is probably needed for this system. For those of you who watch our channel quite regularly, you will know that this is the worst power supply clean out that we've ever done. I'm talking like 10 cockroaches. Now we did have a lot of dust on the inside and I don't like to open up power supplies, it's quite dangerous, but honestly, if I ever wanted a chance of getting this working efficiently, it really needed to be open. There was nests in here, cockroach shit. <laughs> Rusting happening as well. We ended up wet sanding that down and then repainting this whole thing. I even took a picture of the sticker before we removed it just so that I could stick something back on there. So I knew what the power was on all the rails and things like that. So we went above and beyond for this power supply even though I'm probably gonna switch it out anyway, but I'm just curious to see if this thing still works. And look, I know the greys are not matching. I did wanna paint the outside of the other parts as well, but unfortunately, I think someone's been in this power supply before and they've used some really strong adhesive to glue down these parts here and I, and I couldn't release it or anything like that. So there's parts stuck on the inside and 
Honestly, trying to tape this up would have been near impossible. So we did the best that we could. Now this motherboard's kind of like the previous build. The Intel stock coolers, they're blowing towards the heat sink. And so all of the dust is getting caught in amongst all of the fins. Not only that, it's also sticking to the CPU socket. Now I can tell at one point in time, the CPU cooler was installed properly because I could see the outline of the fins. However, three of the four standoffs were not even clipped in. We had so much dust sitting in there. So I think the PC was sitting there for at least enough for a lot of dust to settle under there. Now we have dust everywhere around the whole IO. So we're gonna have to get the toothbrush in there to reach all of those hard to reach places. I've also got a pipe cleaner, which will be able to get in between all of the gaps. And even the PCIe lanes, they're fully covered in dust. The RAM slots, they're also gonna need a very, very thorough clean. I mean, even amongst all these pins and the SATA ports, the whole motherboard just really needs a good deep clean to take that smell away and that dust away. Not to mention the thermal paste application, it's all dried up and it was very poor. The motherboard, it's always a favorite of ours to clean up because there is always so much dust and grime in amongst all of the parts that you can't really get to, but this is cleaned up super nicely. I mean, we had dust everywhere. That's why the toothbrush is our best friend when it comes to cleaning all these PC parts because the bristles can get in and amongst all of the tighter spaces, especially with the help of the pipe cleaner. We were able to get in and amongst all of the back IO there, completely clean it up, get rid of all the dust because it was absolutely cat especially around the CPU socket. Now, this is an i5-4460 CPU. And because we had the stock cooler on there, there was so much dust constantly being blown towards the motherboard. Now, over time, what this has caused is there's a lot of grease, grime, and dust sitting on the socket. And so now we actually have pitting and stuff on the metal, which cannot be removed anymore. So apart from that pitting, the motherboard actually looks fairly brand new. Only time will tell if it'll work though. So fingers crossed. You know, I'm not necessarily a fan of using stock CPU blocks, but when it comes to these older PC builds, it has plenty of cooling to handle a 4460 i5 CPU. However, that cooling is not going to be sufficient enough when it is absolutely caked in all of the fins with so much dust. Again, smelly, oily, sticky, dry thermal paste, so it's in need of some fresh thermal paste. And I think we'll get this cleaned up really well. The toothbrush is gonna have to be used to get in amongst all of the fins, but I'm confident we'll make this look brand new. Honestly, this cleaned up really nice. Much like our previous video, because it's blowing air in, there was so much dust and grime caked within the fins and also around the CPU socket. It was absolutely disgusting. Super grimy, super smelly, but luckily enough, you can actually take this whole plastic bit off and have full access to the heat sink. So getting in our pipe cleaner and our toothbrush was actually quite a breeze. And I was even able to get the hose in there as well to try and remove a bit more dust that the pipe cleaner couldn't really reach. And all in all, it looks fairly brand new. Little bit of staining on the rear where the thermal paste is, but it's not that bad. It's not gonna affect any performance or anything like that. So I'm super happy with the end result. When it comes to PCs, fans, radiators, they're the absolute worst. They just accumulate dust over time and it creates these little patterns on there. It looks like furry mountains. I can't stand it. So the sooner we get this cleaned, the better. It smells, it's oily, greasy, but I think we'll be able to clean this up really nice. And I wanna add a third fan to the PC because it had two intake, but no exhaust. So let's see if we can find something on the shelves.
You know, the one thing that I've noticed with these cleanup videos is the worst parts of a build always seem to clean up the best. I mean, once you remove all of the grime, all of the dust underneath, it's honestly looking brand new. Like I can't fault anything on this fan. It looks fantastic. I wouldn't have even known that the blades were see-through without removing all of that dust. So with these all cleaned up, there's obviously less weight on the fan blades as well. So these should work more efficiently. And hopefully the new owner of this PC keeps this nice and clean. And that'll prolong the life of like the bearings and things in the fan. Super happy with how these turned out. Well, this is a very interesting situation. We had four RAM sticks installed. However, they're all different apart from these two. These two are the exact same. Four gigabyte sticks each running at 1,333 megahertz. And these two are completely different. Now it's not always wise to run RAM sticks that are different speeds, different timings, because it can really stuff up the computer. As far as cleaning goes, they're actually fairly clean. I'll just give them a quick wipe down. It did need the toothbrush to get in and amongst all of the bits and pieces on the module. Uh, but apart from that, the dust came off very easy. They cleaned up nice. I wanna make sure all the timings and capacities are right for these RAM because I don't want any issues. So I need to do some testing with these RAM sticks because I'm not getting enough information off of the stickers on the RAM to confirm whether or not the timings and everything are the exact same as these two sticks right here. Now these are four gigabytes each. So this is a total of eight gigabytes. And then of course we have these two sticks, which I have no idea what they are, but we will figure it out. Mate, this GPU is an absolute dog's breakfast. I mean, the fins, they're completely caked. The fan, especially the underside, has so much dust on it. It's stinky, sticky. And wait until you see the back. So much dust there from being installed this way in the PC. All of the dust accumulating down over time and sticking to the back. It's not pleasant. And even on the PCB, there's just so much dust. So we're gonna fully take this apart and make sure it is looking brand new. I mean, even the IO. It needs a good clean. It was absolutely caked with so much dust, especially when we opened this up. Behind the fan, absolutely greasy, disgusting. Found a cockroach or two inside as well, but the fins were the worst part. That's where we got the toothbrush in and we also had to get the pipe cleaner out because the bristles couldn't reach everywhere in there. Considering how old this graphics card is, it has cleaned up extremely well. This is a GTX 750 OC edition. So I'm quite keen to see how it'll perform in the latest games and we'll be sure to test it out. It's got a fresh application of thermal paste, so it's going to be running as best as it ever has. This will be an interesting one. Very keen to test it out. It looks fantastic. As far as storage goes, we have a Seagate Barracuda 200 gigabyte drive. This is very old and we also have a Seagate gate one terabyte hard drive so i don't know if there's much point having the 200 gigabyte drive in there it is pretty dusty at the back it's not too bad but there is lots of wear and tear on the front side here lots of dust stuck on it but nothing that a general wipe over cannot handle and the same with this one as well just a little bit of dust on the surface overall not too bad a condition Honestly, there wasn't too much wrong with the hard drives. It was literally just surface dust here and there. Uh, cleaned all of that off, got the grease off. And the only thing that I have noticed is a little bit of wear and tear marks just because of how old these probably are. And a little bit of pitting on the front of this drive, probably from the dust and grease sitting there for so long, it kind of eats into the material. But honestly, apart from that, I don't see why these wouldn't work. Well, we'll soon find out once we test them all. Well guys, everything's clean now. So it's time for the rebuild. Well, I tapped into my stash of motherboard standoffs because the previous guy didn't even have standoffs to put the motherboard in. He screwed it straight to the case.
Well, there's no point me putting in the old power supply yet. I'm just gonna leave it hanging. I wanna see if it works and then we'll swap it out. So this is the first boot. Hopefully everything works. A few moments later. I can't actually get anything out of this power supply. So I kind of think that the whole system stopped working because the power supply is dead or something. But I'm gonna try and bridge the 24 pin just to see if I can get anything out of it. That'll be quite interesting for me. And then we'll have to test changing the power supply over and see if that works. Eventually. Oh, um, this power supply down here, tried that as well and it's not working either. So I think more than likely it's a dead motherboard. I'm just hopeful that I have a replacement motherboard. I'm not sure if I have gear that's as old as this one, so hopefully find something on the shelves. So we've got the jumper on the 24 pin. Let's see if the power supply works. Okay, so we're getting power out of the power supply. I actually think it's a dead motherboard, so let's actually get the parts up here and we'll try and put the CPU and all the other parts into a different motherboard to see if that works. So I've got this old motherboard here. We know it works because we do end up getting a display, which is fantastic. So we can actually use this to plug in our RAM, test if the RAM works, plug in our GPU, make sure we're getting a display output, and then also the CPU. Now, if all of those work, then we can narrow it down to being a dead motherboard. All right, first test on the GPU. Let's see if it works. Come on. Oh, we've got display, awesome. Okay, I'm very, very excited that the GPU works because that is one thing I really wanted to test, even though it's a GTX 750, I feel like we could get some low Fortnite gameplay or something. Excellent. All right, GP works. Let's test the RAM now. Let's see if the uh, RAM works. Yeah, nice. Excellent. All right, so we're getting a boot up with the RAM as well. So I want to do some further stability tests on the RAM just to make sure. Uh, but obviously, we've got to load up Windows and um, yeah, we'll check it from there. But so far, so good. All right, new CPU. We have a working CPU as well. So it ultimately looks like the motherboard is the issue. I wanna test the old power supply. If it boots up this, <laughs> that's a little gem right there. All right, we got the old cockroach nest power supply in. Let's see if it actually works. Well, things are spinning, so that's a good sign. I wanna see something on the screen. Hey, not bad. It's just a dead motherboard. And last thing we've done with this system is we've swapped out two of the hard drives. We put in a brand new Seagate Firecuda drive in there. So it's gonna be nice and reliable. We don't know what the old ones were like. But now we've got the games downloading, so let's test them out. So I was viewing the case from the front and this mesh panel, it looked pretty good. But then when I viewed it from the side a bit, I could see a lot of rust. So I'm actually gonna take that off, give it a fresh paint job. But before I do that, I'm gonna hit it with some CLR to remove the surface rust. Then that paint job will clean it all up. Another thing I also noticed is the power button. The cables are snapped off, so I'm gonna re-solder them on and we should be good to go. While this low-end PC is not everyone's cup of tea, it just goes to show that a young kid or anyone on a serious budget can get started with PC gaming for next to nothing. This PC is a great low-setting, non-demanding gaming PC. Games like Fortnite, Minecraft, or even Grand Theft Auto V, like we are demonstrating here, will play just fine in 1080p low settings. Yes, we were not hitting 60 FPS. We were actually achieving an average of 50 FPS. Keep in mind we have OBS running, so that drops the FPS to around 45 because it's using resources. Our CPU and GPU both sat around 54 degrees Celsius, so I'm very happy with this machine. And now, for the final B-roll. 